What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Iron Roots Podcast brought to you by Play. I'm your host, Zach Evanesh, and in today's episode, I'm going to be talking to you about a book that was written in 1996 that literally saved men and women around the country during a time when those hardcore mom and pop gyms were getting shut down. I'm talking about none other than the book Dinosaur Training, written by Brooks Kubik. This is Plays Iron Roots, a podcast dedicated to uncovering the strength legends, the training methods, and the stories around physical culture and iron history. I'm your host, Zach Evanish. Grab yourself a protein shake, chalk up, and prepare to travel back in time to some of the most awe-inspiring stories of iron history. It's go time. Okay, guys, I'm super pumped for this episode because this book was a life changer for me. Now, I want to make sure you see the photos that I'm sharing in this episode and all the other episodes. So head on over to play.pro, P-L-A-E dot pro, because the visual of these books and magazines and these old strength courses are just going to fire you up. You're going to want to go to the gym. And if the gym is closed, you're going to want to break into the gym. So this book, Dinosaur Training, was written in 1996. Unfortunately for me, I didn't come across this book probably until about 2002 or 2003, but I would have loved to have this book in the mid-90s because here's what was going on in the mid-90s, guys. I was competing in bodybuilding in 95, 94 and 95, and I was at what was considered a hardcore gym. But around that time, fitness started making its way into the industry. So it started coming to this place like, oh, those bodybuilders are too big. They're too jacked. Now all these fitness magazines were coming about. And the gym I actually trained at, the guy welded everything from the squat racks to the dumbbells that went up to 180 pounds to the benches. Anything that broke, the guy who was the owner would go to the back put up a curtain and you'd see him welding the dumbbells together or welding whatever he had to fix. But that gym started getting a downturn when the owner, I think, feared that fitness was taking over. So the brown and tan equipment now became white and baby blue. The chalk was no longer allowed. Work boots were no longer allowed. Dropping weights was no longer allowed. Heavy Heavy metal, hard rock music was no longer allowed. They removed the tape deck even from the gym. And before you knew it, all those hardcore lifters disappeared. And I remember asking myself at age 19, what happened to those guys? Where did they go? My hope is that they came across this book, Dinosaur Training, and they became what was called cellar dwellers or garage gym lifters guys that basically created their own world of training, training like dinosaurs. Now, I want to read you an excerpt from this book, Dinosaur Training from Brooks Kubik, and you're going to get the feel that it was a lot of an us versus them. It was who wanted to train to be a badass and to train to be strong versus who wanted to just get a nice pump up in, pump up those light weights and read the newspaper in between sets. Listen to this, guys. Dare to join us. Dinosaurs do not fit into the world of modern weight training. We are fossils, relics from a bygone era. The glitz and glitter of the modern muscle scene is not for us. The politics, on stage and off stage, boardroom and bedroom, that control bodybuilding contests hold no interest whatsoever for us. Drug bloated, quote unquote, champions do nothing for us. We turn our backs on the modern mess. We go back to an earlier era and a better era, an age where men and women had honest muscles, honestly developed. We leave the rest of the world to continue its insanity. We realize that our numbers are few, that our numbers will always be few, that very few kindred spirits will ever join us and that we can never be more than an island of sanity in a sea of nonsense. We are the dinosaurs 
dare to join our marks. Ah, I'm ready to tear off my shirt and just start lifting the kegs. And then he has a quote all throughout this book. There's many powerful quotes. Here is a very cool quote. There is one thing stronger than all the armies in the world, and that is an idea whose time has come, quoted by Victor Hugo. And then the other quote by uh, Winston Churchill, difficulties mastered are opportunities won. Guys, let me tell you about this book, Dinosaur Training by Brooks Kubik, who you could find out more about him. You could Google him. He's got a blog. He still fires me up. I remember purchasing way back in the day on VHS one of his tapes. I think it was called something like Bars and Barrels. <laughs> he was training in his backyard and in his basement. I remember him training in the backyard with a huge tree log that was cut out and it had handles drilled inside of them. And he was doing max, heavy one rep maxes, clean and press. And he started wrapping chains around it and he's in his backyard somewhere in I think Louisiana. I don't recall exactly where, but just seeing him lifting heavy with no rules out in the backyard, it fired me up so much and it was a big influence and it just catapulted me to, to say, you know what? I can train athletes in my backyard with stones. I can train them up in the woods, sprinting up and down the woods, up to the water towers, lifting, lifting the logs, trees that were down from the winter time. This book helped those lifters who were basically kicked out of the hardcore gyms who felt like they had nowhere to go. I didn't know where they went until years later, Dave Tate said, we've been setting up those guys with garage gyms and basement gyms since day one. So dinosaur training talks about training a lot with odd objects, sandbags, lots of thick bar work. Brooks Cubic is really giving a lot of um, in influence and basically you know, saying, if you're going to press or pull a weight, don't use a regular barbell. Get a thick bar when you bench. Get a thick bar when you go overhead. And I think Brooks was heavily influenced from the Strength and Health magazines because in this three-ring binder here, I've got the dinosaur files. Now, in a previous episode, I shared how I was gifted these uh, dinosaur files and the Dr. Ken training tapes. So you'll have to check them out, play.pro. But inside the dino files, inside dinosaur training, he also, Brooks Kubik also puts a, a heavy emphasis on lifting overhead, which like I mentioned in a previous episode, those early 1900s, mid 1900s, the test of strength was not the bench press. You know, now kids and adults, hey, how much do you bench? Back then it was like, hey, what can you pick up off the ground and lift over your head? What can you clean and press? But Brooks Kubik took it to another level with clean and pressing sandbags, kegs filled with water. And then when you read in the dinosaur files, there's a lot of excerpts where dinosaurs were writing into him talking about their workouts. And it was like he created this army of men and women who refuted what he called the chrome and fern crowd, right? These were the health clubs and the fancy fitness centers. They were like anti all of that and they were all about training crazy. So I wanna share a story while I'm reading the dinosaur files and reading about these people that wrote in, I see something called dino cardio. And as I read it at the end, it's from Jeremy Frisch who's a friend of mine and probably one of the most, he's got to be one of the best youth development coaches I have ever come across. So these dinosaur files were from 1999. Guys, that's 20 years ago. So Jeremy Frisch is talking about dino cardio where he goes out to an empty field and he takes a sandbag and puts it something like 60 yards away. He sprints to the sandbag, throws it on the shoulder, jogs it back, puts it down, sprints down and back to the end of the field and does a repeat. I don't know how many sets he said he does in there. He, he says he does it until he feels he's nauseated. Then he goes to his, his uh, house, into the basement where he had an anvil that weighed over 100 pounds. And he would deadlift the anvil in the crook of his arms like a Zercher deadlift and go up and down the stairs 
Where did he get that idea from? Well, Dr. Ken was writing articles, guest articles for the dinosaur files. In the dinosaur files were a lot of these retro and throwback articles from Strength and Health magazine and other authors from those early days that Brooks Kubik had contributing to the dinosaur files. So I asked Jeremy, hey man, where did you get an anvil 20 years ago? He said, well, I went back to my old high school because when I had metal shop, we had anvils in there to shape the metal. So they were about to rebuild the high school and he went back <laughs> to the high school, found the custodian, the custodian let him in and he said he had to go find his old football helmet. He made up a story. Instead he goes, I just carried that sucker out. So the dinosaur files and dinosaur training, it's a book where a lot of strength coaches and lifters, especially guys in their 20s, they haven't heard about it. They never even read it. This book is a must have. If you're a coach, you need to read it. If you're a director, athletic director, director of strength and conditioning, I dare you to gift this book to your team of coaches and let me know what comes about with them. What came about it with me was this. The Underground Strength Gym was hugely inspired and influenced by Brooks Kubik. When I started training athletes out of the first house we bought, it was one year of training out of my house before we could even live there. The first thing that was fixed up in my house was the two-car garage. And in the backyard was an old cherry tree. It was dying. So my wife's uncle and her cousin were basically our contractors. They cut down that tree in the backyard and then they cut, they cut it in two for me. And the reason why they cut it in two is I told them about this. Boom, Brooks Kubik was training with tree logs, except that log that he had, I believe was gifted to him by Kim Wood, who was one of the earliest strength coaches in the NFL, I believe for the Bengals. And uh, we started carrying and squatting tree logs. And I remember never feeling so much quote unquote core work as I zercher carried and zercher squatted those heavy tree logs. And you gotta remember guys, around 2002, 2003, the state of training, it was called functional training. And so much of it was training on physio balls, standing on one leg, using cable machines to make sure you're doing all this, you know, cross body anti-rotation stuff. But for me, it was dinosaur training. It was sledgehammer strikes on the tree stump that we had cut off. It was climbing a rope that was hanging from a tree in the backyard. It was hand walking while we're holding each other's ankles, maneuvering around the raccoon crap in the backyard. It was going down to the elementary school after hours and pushing around my truck. And that is dinosaur training. It made people fire it up and it really created essentially like a cult of guys that were sick of this fitness and fancy and pretty stuff that wanted to get back to training in work boots, in basements, in garages, that weren't afraid to get their hands dirty. And of course, with Brooks's big influence from the strength and health guys and Dr. Ken, what was it all about? Hard work, low volume, eating plenty of healthy, strong foods, which is the exact stuff that will never go out of style because it always produces results, guys. So that's it for this episode of the Iron Roots Podcast. Talking about dinosaur training, talking about the dinosaur files from Brooks Kubik. Dinosaur training is going to be available anywhere books are sold. Brooks Kubik is still writing, doing awesome things. Now, the dinosaur files... If you could find somebody who's trying to let them go, good luck. And go back to a past episode where I talk about how the dinosaur files were gifted to me, as well as Dr. Ken's training videos. That's an awesome episode. And how could you see the photos of these books and all these magazines? Go to play.pro, P-L-A-E dot pro. Leave comments there. I want to know what you think of each episode. And also do me a big favor. I want to spread the word with this stuff. 
So share it with a friend, send it as a text message, post it on your Facebook or Twitter. We got to spread the word the same way that Brooks Cubic spread the word with dinosaur training in the mid 90s. I want to spread the word of the Iron Roots podcast because it's going to fire people up and make people stronger. Again, guys, check us out at play.pro. I'm your host, Zach Evanesh. I love doing this show. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you next time.